for the ladies. Hey yo, double M. Uh, and Jason Howard is the person that basically wants Caribbean cuisine to be more than what it is at the moment. Which we understand that Caribbean cuisine has its place with, with within carnivals, it has its place within street food, it has its place within all diasporas. But I would say that Caribbean cuisine needs to be in the fine dining community more, you know, it needs to be more recognized worldwide as a cuisine. It, it needs other chefs worldwide to want to do Caribbean cuisine and, and that is something that we, we don't have. So I would say Chef Jason Howard is the person that wants to change this and sees what Caribbean food is. I would like to bring together all chefs of all nationalities and all of the Caribbean to push Caribbean cuisine um, to be on that platform that I can see it should be on. Make a memory, do something that new to me. I would say it's just, you know, um, some people say, you know, you have a dream and, and you know, you search for dream or whatever. I would say that it found me. You know, I never actually wanted to be a chef. I wanted to be just me as a young man growing up. You know, you just want to party, you just want to go, you just want to have fun. And I found myself working in the kitchen co coincidentally. And um, after that, um, I recognize the chefs would be working and stuff and I, I would be looking at it and I would be saying, you know, this looks easy, you know, but I know everybody says that. And, you know, when sometimes the chef's back would, was turned, I would go and do something and I would be like, you know, what, I kind of good at it. So I started cross training and then I became a chef. And from there onwards, it was just upwards and onwards. If I did something, I always wanted to do it quite well. And as they say, you know, karma, I think why I'm a chef today is because enough karma was put, put in by my father, which is David Hall. He wanted to be a chef and he never became a chef. He never, he never, not became, but he never got the opportunity to become a chef. And he wanted to be a chef in Canada and basically international. And now look at me, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing what he wanted to do and even pushing it even further for the Caribbean community to be recognized as a whole as, you know, as, as, as some place that great chefs come from because we have a lot of great chefs in Caribbean and I think they're not recognized um, as much as they should be so so that is something I would like to change also and, and, and be a part of one day. I would say being a chef, the most challenge I have sometimes is finding people with passion. I know a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, chef, I have the passion, I want to work with you, I would love to work. But I would like to tell anybody and everybody, you know, what I do is not easy. It looks quite easy, but as I tell some of my guys that follow me, you know, the devil is in the detail, which in a lot of the work is in the detail. Um, is, is patience, is, is um, discipline, you know, sometimes you're doing one thing for about two hours and I know a lot of young chefs that get really bored with that and and that is something that they need to know that you know what you keep doing things like this it becomes force of habit and then it becomes something you do automatically you can see it you know you got chefs from all over the world they want to do italian cuisine you got chefs from all over the world they want to do japanese cuisine they want to do english cuisine they want to do french cuisine but no one wants to do caribbean cuisine you know only caribbean people and, and chefs the young Caribbean chefs coming up they don't even want to do Caribbean cuisine they want to do Italian they want to do different cuisines so I think that Caribbean cuisine is not getting the respect it deserves or is not getting where it needs to be because we we, we are not investing in our own um, cuisine we're not going back to the grassroots dishes and changing them and looking at them different and seeing how we can improve them with modern techniques. We're just still doing them how we used to do them years ago. Yes, I understand they need to be done like that to keep them historically correct. But when you're gonna bring them to the table, you know, we, we need to use modern techniques. We need to use modern machinery, everything, the modern aesthetics, everything to improve the cuisine, to show people basically the flavors, the textures, the presentation, everything is top notch, which in it is. So I think that Caribbean cuisine has a long way to go still, so it is not where it should be at this point. I may not remember your name, but you have been for years, and now we're on to um, 50 years BIM, which is celebrating um, Barbados' 50th year 
of independence, which in is quite a landmark. So I, I was telling myself, you know what, I need a theme for my next pop-up and it could, and I was like, you know, I think it's time that we celebrated um, Barbados independence through a pop-up and it was just perfect. We had 50 years and we had a great pop-up to do. We had some great food to do. No, and we have some great food to do and you know everything in party pop up this fall in place quite brilliantly and i think this is going to be something to actually show the world and show everyone that caribbean cuisine and and, and we can actually perform on any platform we want and we do and uh, the the, the, the um, dishes and stuff have been thought about quite quite rigorously i must say and and gain getting also involved with the Barbados um, Tourism Marketing Inc, BTMI, they have come on board and we're going to be celebrating Food and Rum Festival also <coughs> in, in tied in with the 50th year of Barbados Independence and we have um, a Beijing chef coming up which his name is Damien Lynch which is the um, Caribbean chef of the year he will be doing a dish on our menu um, at so basically it's hidden from the public but they will realize that you know it's not five courses anymore it's about seven to eight courses now so that is something i like to do with the public you know just mislead them a bit but also keep them wanting a bit more um but the btmi has been very helpful also in helping to support the the um the pop-up for the 50th year and also pushing getting us to a different level of you know what you would say fanciness but it's been it's been quite easy because i've been needing to do a pop-up for quite a while and this was just the right perfect timing I, know the face. I think i might be a photographer or uh, an artist i used to draw when i was a bit younger and then i just stopped with that because you know as a matter of say start writing at the people start writing up my papers all the time start writing at the house you know and and in Barbados, in my in my in my um, era of growing up, you no know, one actually wanted to be an artist. No one think about being an artist. You know, you just see um, homeless people drawing on the side of the road or stuff. But you know, being an artist in my day and age, that wouldn't pay the bills. So I never pursued it. But I could draw, and also I I, I like photography. So I think it would be either a photographer or an artist. You don't have a passion for it. If when you leave the kitchen, you don't be thinking of the food, you don't be thinking of the mistakes you made the day on that day. You don't be thinking of how to do them better the next day. You don't be thinking about your ingredients, etc. Get out now. This is not the profession for you. This profession, the profession of being a chef is an unforgiving one, is a, is a rough one. You know, when other people are sitting and eating, you need to be the person to be, to, be, to be watching and just enjoying and having that emotion that when you see people enjoy your food, you know, you feel fulfilled. And if you do not have a passion for it and you know that if you are at work and you're in the kitchen and you're thinking about other things and it's and is not your family, it is not the job for you. But if... If you tick the boxes that I just said, you're going to be a brilliant chef and I think you should pursue your career. So uh, believe me, if you go forward and you don't have the stuff that I tell you or the moxie as we say, <laughs> it's not for you my friend, it's not for you. But if you do, you're going to make an amazing chef and I would love to work with you someday. You think about the ingredients, you tell yourself, I need the best ingredients to prepare the best dish. But how can we go further? Then you think about how can we go further? How can we get even better? You know? What about creating your own spices? What about brewing your own oils? Then is when you take control of the dish and you can change the dish at any point. Because you can tell yourself, you know what, well, I'm going to I'm going to do a piece of fish, but this spice that I took about four days to make, I'm just going to sprinkle on top. And if you know what you're doing, especially with me and my Scotch bonnet. I love scotch bonnet. I have something called scotch bonnet salt, scotch bonnet powder, scotch bonnet oil, you know, even pickle scotch bonnets. I know how to manipulate the chili. So now that I know how to manipulate the chili, I know how to manipulate my food. So the further back I go and I plant my seeds, 
just an expression when I plant my seeds is when I do my own spices I have more control of my food and my end product so when I realized that I started doing my own spices I started making sure that I brewing my own oils and making these products and to be honest my customers my clients everyone that eats my food taste it and they, and it, it gives my food a unique signature that they say you know what this tastes familiar and I would say yes and I can tell someone what my flavors and what my spices and what my oils will do on your tongue and when you can tell someone that you can see you you've actually gotten to another level of cooking because it's not like you when you, you just tell someone oh you can eat something it's gonna be hot you could tell someone you know I could tell someone when you eat this you're gonna feel a warmth on your tongue and then you're gonna feel that warmth going into the back of your palate that is what I look to deliver you know that 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 signature artwork basically what we will call it is is manipulating your ingredients from day one and this will give you that signature of food and this would actually you know this would actually divide you from other chefs and, and set you apart from them so I think it is very important for young chefs to also do work with the spices get your spices earlier you know just don't look at time as time like just call treating pot think about when you take time when you pick time when you dehydrate it when you put it in oil when you when you steam it how different does it move how 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 does it react you know these are things that young chefs need to be doing and these are things that chefs are doing nowadays and i i think that for me to be doing it if i wasn't doing it i wouldn't be i wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be practicing what I preach. Lost stress. It was great, to be honest. It was, it was great. And I think that uh, law chefs would need the experience because also with the experience uh, on MasterChef, it, it, it taught me too that I needed to work on my weak, my weak side, which was pastry. And a lot of, I know a lot of people now tell me that my pastries are so phenomenal, but for me, I see my pastries as mediocre. You know, there's other pastry chefs that I look up to out there and that I, I just be in awe on a daily basis and these is and this is what I struggle to become. So I think Master Chef has highlighted some of my weaknesses. So I think that with this, um, it was a good experience for me in all. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Um, there's so much different things pulling me different angles, but I would like to remain on my path and see myself next five years I would like to see myself with the first Michelin star for Caribbean cuisine and the first Barbadian chef to get Caribbean cuisine uh, Michelin star also and and also training the young chefs in Caribbean um, in modern Caribbean cuisine and also building um, a platform for them to showcase their work <laughs>